Hello everybody, welcome back, thank you for joining me again today. And we are back on the wine adventures. So let's have a look at what we're going to be doing this week. So for those of you who have been following along, uh, oh, those of you who haven't been following along. So what we've been doing, we've been importing some uh, wine data that I found on Kaggle. And we've been doing things such as modeling the data, querying it, refactoring our data model, querying it again, bringing more data in and that kind of thing. And last week, what we did was look at the variety uh, node that we had. So we had a node label called variety that had uh, grape uh, information in there. So if it was a blend or things like that, and we're doing some processing on that. And something that I was really keen to have a look at, and this is what we're going to be doing this week, is we're going to be looking at the wine description. So each of the wines that we imported had a description and that would talk about any sort of notes about the wine. So, you know, the things you see when they say, it, it, you know, it tastes like lemons or fruit and things like that. And what I was quite keen to do this week was to get that data in and let's see if we could do something interesting with that. So can we pull out some interesting words uh, and then maybe we can start to link wines based on similar features. So that's the plan for today. So this data has not been imported yet. So what we're going to be doing today is getting that data in. So we're going to be changing the data model again. So we're just going to be iterating. And we're adding some more data on. Uh, we're going to be loading that data and then we're going to explore that description data and sort of look at what approaches we can use to turn it into something useful. Right, so let's get cracking. As always, for those of you who are joining along, uh, you can have a look at the link there and that link contains everything. So I write up every week I will write up what we covered. I will give you the code samples. You can download data from there. So if you want to either join me during this stream and have a go, you can do that or you can do that in your own time afterwards. So you have those options. And also if you've got any questions, so I'm afraid I'm only taking questions on Twitch. So for those of you on YouTube, I'm sorry, um, but put your questions in the Twitch chat and I will pick them up as we go along. Right, let's get started. So I'm just going to quickly go over to the uh, repo where I've got all the information. And as you remember, so I've put a little clip there of a couple of the rows. And one of the things we had in there was description. And if I go to the data model, well, what we've got so far, you can see all the bits of uh, data we've, in we've imported. But the one thing we haven't done yet is the wine description. So we're going to need to do that. So what I'm going to do is let's have a quick look at the data. So that is in here. And we're using V3. This is probably going to be quite a large and it's not going to be probably not going to be able to watch uh, look at it in the raw mode because it's quite large, but we'll have a look. So what we may have to do is Presumably not all of the not all of the wines have a description, so you may have to handle the nulls. And for those of you who have been watching along, you will probably remember that we found we had some duplicates of wine in our data set. So we may have to do something about handling the duplicates with the description. But that's okay, we can probably do some hacky things along the way to deal with that. So what we could do. And I'm just going to borrow uh, one of the lines of uh, code, uh, one of the, the, the lines of uh, query that we've used before to import data. So I'm just going to grab one of those from here. And what we could do is we could quickly see, you know, how many lines we've got. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow this piece of code that we've uh, done previously. And I'm just going to use that to load the data. So what's probably worth having a think about is how are we going to change our data model? So, oops, wrong, wrong tab. So what I'm probably going to do for now, and again, uh, for those of you who've been following, I've, I've not got a huge amount of love for this data model. We're probably going to change this as we keep going on the journey. But the really powerful thing with a graph database, and one of the things I really, really love, 
is you don't have to spend a huge amount of time. If you're doing a POC or you're exploring your data, you don't have to spend a huge amount of time trying to figure out what the perfect data model is going to be. What you can do is you just go, you know what, I know these things are connected, bring the data in. And then as you learn more about the questions that you want to ask, as you learn more about what you want to explore, you can just iterate it and adapt it as you go along. And this is great. And that's the approach I'm using for this wine data series. If there's something I don't quite like, I'll change it later. But the important bit is that I've got that data in there. I know it's connected up so I can ask the questions. And then later on, if it makes sense to change something, I can do that. And that's great. And in that vein and in that spirit, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to come off of wine and I'm going to create a description node coming off of wine. So that to me feels like the most sensible thing to do. So I'm going to be reusing reusing my um, query for loading this data and we're not going to be using merge we're going to do a create so uh, the reason why i'm using a create rather than a merge so just quick for those of you who are quite new you can web sort of creating nodes we can either create a node using the create keyword, or we can create a node using the merge keyword. And what create does, create creates that node irrespective of whether it exists or not. And merge, what merge will do is it'll say, right, does this node already exist? If that node already exists with all of the properties in there, it will pre act like a match. But if that node doesn't exist, it will do create. So it's, it's a good way to avoid adding duplicates. But we're using the assumption that each row of data that we have is unique so a unique wine has unique description now this isn't strictly true and what you will find is that we're going to end up having like two descriptions coming off the same wine don't worry we'll fix that later that's that's not a problem so what we're going to do is we're going to need we're going to have to match the wine as well so bear with me i'm just going to alter this query that we have and we will um add some descriptions so what we're going to do, we don't row designation. Let's just quickly remind ourselves what the name of the row is because we're looking at the data and oh, description. Okay, that's nice and easy. So description. And we're going to say value rather than name. Okay. And the other thing we need to do is we need to connect up description to the wine. So what we're going to do for that. So this should be relatively fast as we're doing a create. So we're creating our description value. Oh, not no designation. Let's just say no description. And we want to get the wine as well. I believe it was just, what did we call it? Um, title. Okay, so we want title. So that's the unique name that we have for our wine. So we're creating, and then let's do a with. Oh my goodness, oh, this, this should be okay. It's okay. And they were saying, with D and row, because we want to keep that for the wine. And let's do match wine. Oops. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, we said title, didn't we? match the wine and then we're going to put a relationship between the two so hopefully this is going to work uh, wine has description D. let me just quickly check what's going on there so what we're doing uh you have to use auto if you're going to use periodic commit in browser uh so we're doing we're loading our data so this is pulling it from uh, GitHub, uh, getting each line as a row, and then what we're saying is 
uh, this is the little trick that we use where uh, if there's a null in description so what what i'm going to basically do is if there's no value for description so it's an empty field in the table what i'm going to do is just set no description as a default value and that's how we're going to set that and then what's happening here is I'm just carrying what I've created. So I want to have a reminder for row and I want to carry D, that new node that I created, description node. And then I want to match the wine and then do a sort of wine has description D. So questions just come in. Could I use coalesce instead of for each? Yes. Um, you can so what you would be doing there is coalescing uh what's potentially a zero value with your default value so the only thing i'd need to check with the coalesce is what happens if you've already got a description because if let's say for example you've got description which is i don't know red and fruity so if you coalesce red and fruity with no description you're going to end up with red and fruity no description so well, we can have a little play with that in a second so let me run this. I use this because this is basically going to check to see if it's null or not. And then I think if we use coalesce, you're going to end up with adding something even if there's a value. So let's run this and get this in uh, set up uh, this data into the database. And then we'll have a go with coalesce where we, where we just return it as value to see what happens. OK, so let's see this. And hopefully this is a flawless crew that's going to run without complaint. Oh, no, I've missed something. Let me have a look what I've missed. Um, I've probably missed something off of here. Let me just have a look what's going on. So, one, 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 one. sure why it is it'll be something really obvious and it's staring me in the face isn't it oh i know what i've done i know what i've done here i've not done name colon row dot title that's where i went wrong there we go so that should now work fine i'm just going to grab a copy of that so i can Okay, I will be amazed if this works. Yep, I need a with. Okay, so eh, this is this is awkward. All right, let's do something really hacky and nasty. So what we're going to do is I'm going to load up the descriptions. I, oh, I don't really want to do this because then I'd be matching the descriptions and then trying to hit them back and then I'd have to create an index for that so that the matches are fast and that's just a bit horrible. So the only so the problem is, is we can't get at this bit. So can I do, can I do this? I wonder, let's have a look. Can I do, So I'm wondering if I can return the for each as a value and then do something with that value afterwards. I don't think I can. So let's let me try this. I don't think this is going to work, but you never know. Okay. 
Maybe it does, but I suspect it's not going to connect the relationships up as we want, but I might be pleasantly surprised. So let's do description. I'll give that a few seconds. I suspect it's not doing what we want it to do, but I'll give it a few seconds to run. Um, and maybe I will just go around and do it the way I was thinking of doing it. Let's see what happens. Whilst that's going, let's have a go at the, we'll give that a few seconds. Let's, let's talk about the coalesce. So let's say we do something like this. So let's say we've got, um, uh, well, actually, we can do something else, can't we? We can do something, just do return coalesce. Because what I think is going to happen is it will join two of them to get... Oh, no. No, no, okay. I'll take it back. Let's, let's have a go with the... Let's go with the, the coalesce. Oh no, it's not. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so not quite, yeah, not sure what's going on there. I think I'll have a look at that. Okay, cool. All right, so I've just pointed out that it's uh, the specific with null and an empty string. So, all right, we'll have a look at that if this isn't behaving as expected. I think this is doing something weird and unexpected that we don't want it to do. So I'm gonna kill that query. Go on, let's, try, let's try the coalesce. So. Let's go back to the previous one. So, okay, so let's do this. Create the description, value coalesce, row description, no description. And we get rid of all of this. And then this, the rest of this should still stand. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, I don't know why it's all gone small. Right, we'll give that a little while. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long because we're doing create, so there's no, it doesn't need to do any checks or anything like that. All it needs to do is, um, all it needs to do is just basically say, 
you know, just create, create, create. It's not doing a lookup. So this should be relatively fast. So I'm always a bit nervous if it takes a longer than a few seconds. Because I think we've got about 120,000 rows in here. So it shouldn't take, it shouldn't take a huge long, huge amount of time. So if it does take a while, although admittedly it, it does have to download the CSV to begin with. So that will take a little bit of time, but it shouldn't take a huge amount of time because we're just doing creates. suspicious. I will try I what I will do is I'm going to put this put this file into a the local import folder just in case there's something weird going on because I, I would have thought this should have completed by now so um one moment whilst I drop this into a local import folder. Okay, and I'm just going to kill this query and do this from local. All right, let's see. Right, so and the question's come up, is there an index needed? So the reason why you'd use an index is if you are looking up uh, stuff in the database. So you'd put an index to a property. Now, the reason why I've not put an index in on description, although I, I might change my mind later, but if I was using a merge, so if I was doing something like um, merge description on the value, then I've put an index in there because effectively what happens if you don't have an index is you the basically the engine will go in and it'll do a scan on every single node that has got a, uh, that's got a description label on it. Whereas if you've got an index, all it needs to do is do an index lookup to figure out where the start point is and goes, well, oh, okay, that you know that description fits with that node and it can go straight in. So that's why you'd use an index. Purposes of the description, you notice I'm using a create keyword. So let me bring up the query. You notice that I'm using the create keyword with the description rather than the merge keyword. And when I get the descriptions in there, I'm pr probably not going to be doing any kind of querying on the description itself because it's like it's a paragraph of text. I, I have no interest in doing that. So I've not bothered to put an index because I'm just not going to look look on the description node text. So that's why I've not bothered with doing one. So that's why I haven't done it. However, if I was going to use merge, if I was going to do some kind of text searching on the description, then absolutely I'd put an index on there. So that's why I've not done it. And what I'm intending to do once this is completed is I'm going to be tokenizing the description and that's where we will be putting an index. So I'll have something like description component or something like that as a name. And that I definitely will be putting an index on so that we can quickly search through those. So I'm a little bit curious as to why this is taking so long. And I've probably done some terrible, uh, some, some terrible mistake on here, which was, uh, no, it's fine. It all looks correct to me. So I don't know why it's taking so long. Have we got any nodes in here yet? Oh yeah, we've got some description nodes in there. Maybe I'm just being over, overly optimistic as to how long this would take. So let's do... I don't... I'm going to double check that I've spelled things correctly because sometimes what can happen... 2000. Oh my goodness, that is going to take such a long time if we're only at 2000. Let, I'm just going to check a couple of bits because sometimes what can happen 
is if this isn't dead on, then what it will do, it will create a bunch of these like empty nodes. So let me make sure I haven't done something crazy there. So let's bring back some one nodes. That's fine. It's got wine. Wine's got a. Ah, uh, there we go. Look, it's wine's got a title, and I've put in name. That's why it's taking so long. So, just gonna kill that query. So it these things should never take a long time, and if it takes like this, I this I'd have thought should have completed in like two three, well, two three seconds or something. And the fact that it's taking that long usually says something's gone wrong. And in my case here. I've done name, not title. So I'm just going to quickly check. Well, we can show you this has description. We're probably going to discover we have some. I oh know we haven't loaded in. So let's just quickly make sure I've not accidentally added some phantom nodes in here. So let's do match. Oh, no. OK, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all those description nodes and just start again. Cool. So let me go back and fix this query. So it's a wine title, not wine name. Just, just, yeah, it's definitely title. Okay, cool. That's fine. No harm done. So title is going to be our title and let's try again. goodness it's still going to take a little while I'm surprised by this as expected. I guess we just have to be a little bit patient. So yes I'm just wondering whether it does this thing where it has to it will load all of the uh, description records into memory before it hooks in the relationships. So, you know what, let's do this a quicker way. This is going to take too long and I, I think, yeah, this is taking longer than I would like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill this query and What I'm going to do quickly, I just want to make sure that this is behaving itself because I'm surprised it's taking so long to load. So, because it, what I'm going to do, just as an example, because if I get rid of these, this, this should load pretty fast, so I'm surprised it's taking so long. So let's just 
I'm just going to run it and then I can delete everything and start again. That's no problem. So th this should be pretty fast. And I'm just curious as to why it's taking so long. There you go. Look, so as soon as I remove that, as soon as I move the relationship to connected, let, there you go. Th this is the kind of thing I'm expecting. It should be really fast. So I think it's probably going to be a POC to the rescue. So let's just get rid of those. And I'm just going to reuse what I've borrowed before. Oh, I think this is. Yeah, I'm going to borrow this. Okay. So we are. Oh, can I do it this way around? You know what? I'm just going to put an index on. Let's do this and I'll get rid of it later. So. Uh, description. And that's going to take a little while to build the index. So let's go back to this. And what we're going to do is I think I can get rid of this. Oh no, I have to do that horrible thing where we deal with all the nulls. How many... Oh, I just deleted all those nodes as well. Oh my goodness, there's all sorts of, all levels of fun going on here. Looks like we've got a query running somewhere. Oh my goodness. Okay, so none of these died. So. Don't know what happened there. Normally, if you hit the X, it will kill the query, but in this situation, it has not. So, let's kill some of these queries. Seven three one. That might explain why things are a bit slow. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, okay. No, no, that's fine. When you list queries, it will show the fact that you're calling list of queries as a query. 
Oh, quick question. Uh, no, community edition is still available. So if you go to uh, the download center on the page and you'll see an option there to switch between communities, uh, community and enterprise edition. So, uh, so if you go to here and then if you click on near for click uh, download near for J server and you'll see an option there community community server so it's still there so just so you just click at down the, you just download center and click on community server so it is there right okay so we solved the mystery of what was going on here so i'm just gonna get rid of these and let's start again back to the drawing board so i am curious now is that why it was running so slow? Because there's so much contention going on. Ah, let's let's try again. Let's get rid of these. Clear up the screen. Right. No, no, no let's try again. So we might end up doing these separately. I, I think I'm just going to have to be sensible and do these. Right. Okay. So let's go to. This is going to take forever and we probably want to check if it actually kills this query. Which it does not. Alright, let's, let's try this again. the drawing board so let's do this this is fine we're going to run this in in two passes let's in, let's create the nodes and then we're gonna we've put them in we've put in decks in there i think let's double check description yeah okay cool right so let's do this way around so let's create this and then we'll do a second pass to create the relationship so all right, this should take about 10 seconds. That's what it did last time. And then we can do... Right. And let's do this. That's title. Let's not do that again. Let's 
Oh, now we want to do cover this again, don't we? So, just borrow this. Oh, getting data in is the worst. Playing with the data is the fun bit. So, and then let's do a description. Right. Right, so questions come up about a community edition and having a graphical user interface. So probably worth mentioning, if you download the server version of the product, then you're not going to have the uh, the graphical user interface you may be familiar with when you see desktop. So that will just be the server version. So you are going to perhaps, you know, when you get it running, you probably run it like, sort of as a console or run it as a service. You will then sort of use browser, that like Neo4j browser, you probably access it via Chrome or something like that. So uh, you don't have that. So what you can do is if you want to use that, sort of have that nice sort of uh, user experience for using the GUI, then you will need to download the desktop version. But some things to bear in mind is that with the desktop version, it runs the enterprise edition version of the database, not the community edition. But if you're using uh, Neo4j for educational purposes, if you're learning how to use it, if you're you know sort of doing like a side project, then uh, that's fine so it's only if you're using it for commercial purposes then obviously it gets a bit interesting but cool hopefully that's helpful oh my goodness i always feel like i've, I've done something wrong here and it's taking a long time so what i think we can do i'm gonna i don't know why it's not connecting so i i think what we're going to do for the purposes of, of doing interesting stuff i'm going to abandon mission on putting the query in because we've got the descriptions in so we can do interesting things with the descriptions even though we've not uh you know got it we've not connected the wine to description that's fine we can still do fun stuff with descriptions so that, i'm going to do that now and i'm going to go have a look at why this is doing uh silly things and it's probably me it's user error i've done something silly somewhere and it's not behaving so let's leave this for now and again i'm just going to quickly make sure that it's stopped that query And let's stop this query. Three, eight, seven, four. Okay. Right. So we've got we've already got this, we've already got the descriptions in here. So if we're going to bring back a few. So you see, we've got these names. So let's do n dot value. So let's have a look at the description. So this is um, so we've brought some of these in, and let's actually look at some interesting stuff that we can do here. So we have a look at description, and we've got things like this fortified red was you know aged in wood. So things like woods, you know, bearing in mind, for example, that red wines are either matured in um, sort of stainless steel um, tanks, or maybe they can be aged in uh, barrels. So that kind of thing might be interesting. If we have a look at some of the other kind of descriptions we get in here. So things like, um, okay, this is talking about the blend, but sometimes, you know, you get things like plum or um, talking about sort of fruits that might describe a word, or, or you've got sandalwood describing the various flavors of the wine. And what I thought would be really interesting to do is can we start extracting these out and start to get sort of common descriptions? So for example, like how many wines have like sandalwood as a thing to describe it or things like sort of beeswax or pineapple so it'd be interesting so what we're going to do is we're going to take the description and we're going to be tokenizing those words and pulling them out in separate notes so similar to last week where we had um you know remember we had the variety and then what we did we pulled out variety so variety might be like a 
Cabernet Sauvignon as an example. And what we did was we tokenized that to have a Cabernet and a Sauvignon. So we could start doing things like how many wines feature Cabernet or Shiraz or Grenache or something like that. So we're going to do something similar here. And the interesting bit with this is that we've got lots of stop words. So things like the and of. We've also got lots of words that we probably aren't interested in, like vineyards and stuff like that. So first off, what would be good is we're going to go through all of the descriptions. We're going to tokenize those words and I'm going to create like a description, um, description word or something like that. So first off, we're going to do that. We're going to do a bit of cleaning up. So we're going to pair everything down to lower and then we're probably going to do a bunch of iterations where we try and clear up the words but for now we can just have a look and see like, how many mentions there are of, of certain items so let's get cracking with that so I'm going to create an index for description uh, description word because we definitely do want one of those so description word and we're going to call it value and then we're going to go through all the descriptions and this is probably going to be fun. We're going to split the words by space. So let's do match and oops, match the description. And then we're going to split the description. So with I'm just going to steal how I wrote it last week because it's the same basically we're going to be running the same query as we did last time because uh, I'm going to leave the hyphens in for now we can decide whether we want to get rid of the, the get rid of the hyphens but I'm gonna basically what we're doing here is So what we're doing here is we're getting all the descriptions and then what we're going to do is this was a value, wasn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the description values. We're going to split them by space and this is going to bring back an array of the, the words. So you can see here, this is going to bring back a lot of words. And then what we're going to do is we're going to merge that new word and so if apoc, te apoc text clean, we're probably going to get rid of that because that cleans out any um, accents. It gets rid of, uh, I think, numbers as well. Let's have a quick look what it gets rid of. And maybe we'll include it in there. So clean strips a string of everything except alphanumeric characters and converts it to lower case. So that's going to get rid of hyphens. That's going to get rid of accents. That's going to get rid of um, like any accents. So I'm thinking for now, let's leave it. We, we won't get rid of those. So I think we'll just use normal string split. So split v dot value as names and then for each any names. And obviously this is not variety name. This is going to be description name. Description word, sorry. Oh, that would have been another long query. Description word, and that's got a value. And we'll just do a lower. Or is it just lower? I think lower n. And then we are going to merge the component onto our description is component of V. So I'm just going to change this to, because we've already got a component relationship. So I'm just going to change this to is description, is description word. Here's description with a word V and that should be good. Let's just double check. Well, it will complain to us if it's not lower anymore. So let's see what happens. Oh no, I forgot to put what we're splitting it by. Fail. Okay, right. The 
this might take a while, but that's okay. So what we're doing is, actually I'm thinking maybe I should revisit this because we've got 120,000 and we want to do those in batches. So I'm going to, I don't know, let's let it oom if it ooms. If it does, then I'll just redo it. It's fine, live life on the edge. But that's going to be quite big because you sort of think about some of these sentences are huge where we've got like many of these. So I think we're probably going to want to iterate that rather than trying to do it all in one big go. I'm just going to steal the APOC query I did for this rather than rewrite it and replace the variables. That might be a better idea. Let's rewrite that just in case we're going to end up doing that. I think what I'm going to do in the future is I will get the data pre-imported, especially if we've got a large amount of things so that we can do the fun stuff actually during the, the live sessions. can do it this way around. So I just oopsie daisy. Let's just rewrite this. And it's not going to be a width because we've already got fee, so what we want to say. I oh, know we can probably do that, that's fine. Right, let's see what happens. Okay, cool. Right. <gasps> and let's just do that. Let's see if we get more joy with that. Oh, 
Oh, we're going to have some. Actually, no. There's there's probably going to be a limit to how many times the word has. So we're probably going to have. I know we've got like 120,000 odd descriptions here, but there's going to be so much word repetition going on. So I don't think we're going to see this budge much higher than say 25,000 words. Famous lost words. Okay. I don't think it's going to be much higher than I don't know. 35,000 words. I mean, like, there's only so many words in English dictionary. And we are using the merge. And we're lowering the words. So it's there may be some numbers and hyphens in play, but we shouldn't see a huge number of... Oh my goodness, I'm going to eat my words again on, on the number of those. I'm, I'm sure we're not going to have a huge number. But anyway, let's uh, lap that rattle through. We can certainly have a quick look at what are our popular... What are our popular words? Let's 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 do that. That would be a bit of fun. Whilst that's a uh, working way, let's see what are the popular words. Oh, what way around did I put the description word? Vn is description word. Yeah, so it's this way around. What are our popular words? Whilst we wait for that to complete, so uh, description. And let's do return d dot value we called it, didn't we? D dot value and let's Oh, I should probably check the. Ah, I'll look at the index in a second. All right, so let's do d dot value and let's do count des as. Oh, I'm running out of sensible names. But so we're probably going to see things like the and of are like really popular. There we go. Oh, and there we go. And top top of the uh, top of the pile there. Okay, so we're probably almost finished there because I, I mean, and's probably been used in every single every single description that we have. So when and gets up to one hundred twenty thousand, then we know it's all there. But you you can see, look at these. So straight away, like if we're starting to think about how we're going to remove our stop words or, or what would be our our wine defined stop words, we could probably just go. You know what? everything that's i don't know certain value we can probably get rid of straight away so if it's like if we have more if it's it features at least 25 percent of the time we're probably going to get rid of it and if you look at that the kind of things that pop up like flavors and aromas i mean you would expect that to be in the description so that's interesting and then obviously things like fruit and uh, acidity. Yeah, acidity is probably a common one. Tannins, you probably expect wine to have tannins. So that's an interesting one. But you can straight away see we could probably apply some kind of rule where we can get rid of loads of these. And look at this, we've got like full stops and things. So maybe we could have used the APOC thing to get rid of some of the punctuation. But that's fine. That can be our next pass to clear things out. But these are the kinds of things going to be interesting, like seeing um, like what wines are linked to blackberry and then, and then we've got the then we've got the um wine blend so we can make a decision about do we want to remove those and just stick to the wine blends that we have or do we want to include those as part of descriptions as well oh, it's all good it's all good all right so have we got oh look, there we go it's finished i kind of want to get my wines i want to get my um, wine connected description so let's see how it goes so you can you can see now so if we rerun this let's see now that all the data is completed we can have a look at some of the numbers there you go so look and so pretty much barring 2000 descriptions which you would probably discover are no description have uh, and used 
followed not that far away by the. So you can start to get an idea of where we can do some interesting things. So we have got a total of 59,000 words. Oh my goodness, that is way more than I thought we were gonna have. So let's let's go the other way around. Let's have a look at the ones that are the, the, the least popular being shown. So let's do, uh, we're gonna order by S, so this will now give us the ascending value. So what are the really rare terms that are used for the wine descriptions? Wheat flour, that's a, an interesting one. Okay, so you can, so you can straight away see, so some of these we can probably um, like when we do some clean up on punctuation things, we can get rid of it. But so this, this is another interesting one where maybe, so we talked about how we could probably get rid of some of the words where, you know, they're, they're massively featured like and. So those are the stop words we're going to get rid of. The other side of this is maybe we're going to get rid of things where they only feature once. So an interesting question here would be how many of these terms at the moment as they are just appear once? So let's do with D count does as S where S um now we're to do collect where count or size S is equal to one and then let's return count D. So this is gonna tell us how many of the description words have only you have this one-to-one -one mapping to description so they're only ever used once let's have a quick look at that oh what have i done wrong here it turns oh uh oh, i did return twice that would explain it return count d let's have a quick look wow really that's insane okay so where the size of it is greater than one. Oh wow, okay, so about half of the description words that we have. So if we do how many description words do we have? Yeah, look at that. So like nearly half of all of our description words are only used once. I mean, okay, some of that's going to go away when we clean up the data and get rid of the punctuation and, and whatever else. But that's 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 like, wow. I mean, that that's, that's data we can get rid of straight away because it doesn't tell us anything useful about the descriptions of the wine. So that's quite cool. So it'll be interesting as we go through and, and clean this up let's see what happens so let's let's do a bit of that now so first of all um i, I really want to get no, let's let's clean the words up first and then i'm going to look at getting description hooked onto wine so that we can do some really cool things like see how many wines have got sandalwood flavoring in them but let's okay let's sort out some of this because this is not good so i am going to I guess the question here is, do we want to split the words by hyphen? And I think we probably do want to do that. I, I think that's useful information. So let's let's do that. We've got like years and things that we that we're not interested in. So let's do a first pass of splitting the words by hyphen because maybe that's useful data to us. And then what we can do next is we'll then do the, we probably want to split by um, apostrophe as well because there might be some interesting, actually no, let's take a step back and think about this. So we are probably dealing with plural words in here. We're probably dealing with um, like we've got the apostrophes, the possessions and things like that. We're, we may be dealing with some tenses as well. Now I don't, oh my goodness, look, there we go. We've got like slashes as well to be thinking about. Okay, so we've probably got a bunch of splitters that we want to think about. So we probably want to split by 
Um, I'm going to split by, obviously because we've done space, but we probably want to split by slash. We probably want to split by, split by a hyphen. Um, okay, so let's, let's do that because otherwise that would be quite a lot. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, we've got some spelling mistakes. I assume that's a spelling mistake. So we've got some fun things to do with. So let's, oh, we've got um, that as well. So what I suggest we do, let's split by hyphen. Let's split by the slash as well. And then we can do the, then we can run the um, clean text fun uh, procedure that we've got in, or function that we've got in APOC. Then we can go through again and get rid of like anything with a number in it because we're not worried about numbers. So maybe that's not a bad way to go for it because then things like, oh, and commas, no, commas have got space, it's fine. And then things like clean, like when we do that clean text, it's going to get rid of the bracket and it's going to get rid of the, the thing. So let's, let's do that to begin with. So this is probably going to be quite a slow query, but that's okay. So let's, we're going to go back and I'm trying to think if it makes more sense to just I think it makes more sense I'm just going to delete all of this because rather than trying to re-split the stuff just to bear in mind what's happened so if I bring up the uh, schema what we've done is we've got our should be hiding here somewhere. Oh, it's not hiding. Oh, okay, there it is. So, what you can see here is we've got a description and you've got description word connected to description. So if we, um, let's say we've got something here where we've got wine and wines as an example. So it's a plural and we're gonna merge those together because that should be the same node. What we're going to have to do is we're going to end up deleting one of those words, but we still need to make sure it's connected back up to description uh, before we get rid of the duplicate. And it's probably quicker and easier if we just delete what we've just added and then rerun the query where we do the splits with all the things we wanted to specify rather than trying to fix it now. So that's what I think, uh, that's what I think we're going to do. So let's do that. So we're going to do match um, description word. And let's do a detach, delete, D. It's so we've only got about 70,000, so that should be fine. And we're gonna rerun that uh, query that we ran previously. Conversation starting, a great description for a wine. Uh, you know what, I'd love to see a description for a wine which is like antisocial. You, you, you're not gonna talk to anybody, you're just gonna go off and sit in the corner and drink it by yourself. I don't think that wine would sell particularly well. Right. Let's go back. There we go. And we are going to go back and use our um, APOC split. So APOC.text.split. And we're going to put in some. But do either. Oh, no, no. Let's use the other one. So we either want to split by space or we want to split by a hyphen or and I do I need to escape that or is it going to complain I'm probably going to do a test run as well of this to make sure do, oops what did I just do all right so let's do um, uh, with my test string Is that going to do as expected or is it hey yeah, perfect right so it's gonna work nicely so I'm surprised oh I know why it's taking so long this is actually a terrible query to do because I thought I'm sitting here thinking we've only got uh, 70,000 uh, description words but it's the relationships there are many 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 relationships if you think about all how you know like and connected to like 119,000 wines so 
I probably am going to want to iterate that, so yeah, that might be a good idea. Right, let's remind ourselves how to do that. Oh. Okay, let's let's give that a go. I, I didn't realise that existed. Is that gonna kill the relationships as well? Let's find out. Why not? Let's let's find out what happens. There we go. Yep, yeah, that was expected. All right, let's see how this works. Um, so I need to give it an array of IDs. Could I just? Node, nodes, ID, IDs. Hmm. Ah, let's do a bit of guesswork. Otherwise, we use the other one. Um, well, actually, let's just do this. It'll just it'll swear at us, and then we can see what we need to do next. Right. Okay. So, Let's, let's see if this works. I've, I've never done this before, so might work, might not. Description word. I bet you this is not going to work. Oh well. So let's collect um, ID D as notes so what does it want um no don't do that at least two arguments of type any and integer I'm not sure what the two arguments I'm supposed to pass. Oh, oh it's when it when it, it's when it goes wrong is what is how you learn. That's the best bit. If it goes right all the time, then you don't learn stuff. So. Uh, I forgot to put a with in there, didn't I? With collect ID nodes as nodes. I don't know. Return. Oh, I don't know what it's going to return, but let's see what happens. Right. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, let's have a look if we've got a bit of description about how the arguments look. No, that tells me how to install it.
cool APOC nodes. I'm going to look that up later and see how it works. And I'm going to go back to um, iterating the deletes instead. So the thing about match and detach delete star is it, it works great if you've got a small number of relationships and nodes. Uh, it doesn't work so great if you've got a large number. And the reason why is effectively what happens is the engine brings everything into memory. And then after it's done that, it tries to delete everything. Whereas we're deleting stuff. We, you know, we just want to, you know, not too worried about uh, doing that. So what you want to do is you want to iterate and you just basically want to say, hey, bring up a few nodes at a time and then detach and delete them and then bring up another few set of nodes and then detach and delete them and you just keep going until they're all gone and I like that it doesn't it only has to bring into memory those few nodes that you put in so let's find the iterate so it's mentioned in I know it says in, in um, load CSV it's just because it mentions the two different iterates in here I think or maybe not let's we'll search it mm -mm -mm. Let's go back to the oh where's no where's the procedure functions we'll find it in here iterate so is this the one we want oh it might be periodic commit now yeah. let's bring uh, until it returns zero that's what we want we want it to keep running a query and oh you go you got an example here we want to keep running the same query over and over and over again until we return a count of zero so our count of zero is going to be the number of uh, the um, description word nodes that we have so i'm going to copy this and then just edit accordingly all right so we want to match I'm just gonna copy this stuff Ooh. oh I might as well go match description words we don't need this because we're going to get rid of all of them with the w limit limit and this is what we're going to specify for the iterating and we are going to I'll limit it to a thousand. Oh no, because some of those I am going to limit it quite small because some of those, oh, let's go 100 because some of those were well connected, those nodes. And we want to detach, delete. W. Right. Let's see what happens. We can do our little count query as well so we can see that they're being deleted. Oh, there you go. Look, it's 71,000. So there we go. We shall let that plug away. And whilst it's doing that, we can get our new query ready where we are going to. So this is the same so query where we are going to spell description. Uh, the text into description words and then we're going to create new nodes and here what we're doing is we're using the apoc text split and we are splitting by space by hyphen by slash and then you know what let's let's go for broke let's do the um apoc clean text as well when we're adding the description words so let's get rid of all the character the other characters and things like that and then maybe we can use something like Le levenstein similarity or something to try and deal with the the, with the plurals and things let's go let's go broad brush so let's have a reminder i think it was apoc text clean 
so let's do that. So apoc.text.clean. And that's going to get rid of all the characters. So this is running away. Like, how many of these have we got to? Oh, okay, there we go. That'll just take us a couple of minutes, I reckon. And we are done. And then we can do those. And then I'm feeling ambitious. So let's try and get those sorted, get the number of words down. So we've got 71,000 now. I, I reckon we're probably going to get closer to about 60,000 when we do this clean and get them sorted. So let's see what happens. Right, so where are we with this? Oh, we're done. Hey, that was nice and fast. Okay, obviously what's happened, it probably started with like and and the, and it took a bit longer and then it got to all the ones that were just one-to-one -one mappings and just quickly resolved those. So that was nice and fast. So let's run this again. Let me just, hey, yeah, I put that to clean and let's get that going. And that didn't take very long, did it, last time? So just give that a couple of minutes to split all those words up. And amusingly, we can now run the same query again to see all the number, see the number of words increasing because we've deleted them all and now we put them back in again. So I'll just give that a moment. Yeah, so Previously, what I've done to deal with plurals is I've done like rules to try and match words that end with Y and then IES and then to deal with the tenses. I'm not sure I'm going to do it with this data set. I, um, maybe, maybe not. I haven't decided. I mean, for those of you who are interested how I did it before, uh, just Google um, near for j BBC Good Food and you'll see it's like uh, post number five where we're sort of dealing with duplicates. I do discuss how I've done it there. For this, I think I might just cheat and just do like word similarity and go, well, you know what, they're close enough. So just say they're the same. We'll see what happens. I don't know how many times strawberry versus strawberries appears. We're going to, we'll have a quick look at that once we've completed this. 24,000. Oh, I'll be interesting to see how different it is now that we're doing that cleaning and the merging and whatever else. And then we'll do next iteration where we will try and deal with the plurals. Right. Oh, we can do some fun things now. So we can, let's go rerun our, that query that we had previously. So whilst that's loading, we can still go off and have a look at what our ratio is like. Oh, let's get rid of some of this sea of red. Um, mm -mm. Oh, there we go. This is the one we wanted. So let's just quickly have a look at that. And scroll back down. And it's still number one, unsurprisingly. Nobody was surprised by that. So still got a little, little way to go. It's all good. How many words are we up to? So if that's us, it's, it's going up a lot slower now. We get, we're getting rid of all of the uh, similar words. So I right, let's go. Let's let's do the bottom ones as well. I don't think. How many of these? How many ones come back? I wonder. I wonder if it'll come back with none so far. Oh, there we go, it's running. Oh, look, there you go. But you can see a big difference here. So you can see we've got rid of the... Um, you, you can see, like, all of the things have gone far. So Rosemary is going to be interesting because I wonder if that was an apostrophe there. 
Oh, and some of these haven't the the hyphens. So okay, maybe we had a different character that were joining those. But that's okay. We you know it doesn't have to be a hundred percent. We can have a look later at better approaches for dealing with that. So maybe we're gonna split by every single like character that we've got going. So we can do a bit of research on this. This is not a problem. And the thing with this is we can always, because we're connected from uh, description to description word, we can always backtrack. And if we see something like this nose vanilla and we want to know if nose vanilla is in fact a word or is it hyphenated or had some other thing joining those two together? We can always go back and have a look at the description where it originally came from and we can deal with it accordingly. Okay, right, so let's see how are we going with the oh we are done. So bearing in mind we had something like 71, 71 and a half thousand. We are now down to look at that. We've we've halved the number of description words we've got now just by you know doing the hyphen and doing the apoc text clean and things like that so let's get rid of some of these uh, god let's rerun this one we're still expecting Anne to be very popular but Um, we're starting to get an idea, so so go okay, like things like I bet you there was lots of hyphens between it and things, so those those have appeared. So what we can do as well, and I don't really want to do it on the whole data set because this is going to be a crazy number. But what we can do as well is we can still do that text matching to see how similar they are. So let's do um, D1 description word D2 description word and obviously we don't want to compare it against itself because this is a Cartesian query that we're asking so let's do id d1 is less than id d2 so this is to make sure that they're never the same node so we're using the internal ids for that and let's have actually i probably we don't want to compare short words, so let's pick longer words. So let's say, and uh, I think we use size now, don't we? Size d1 dot value is greater than six, and size the same idea here. D2 dot value is greater than six, and then let's do with um, d1, d2, and let's do apoc.text.11. Let's go to text. Text functions, just make sure I spell it correctly. Fuzzy matching. Oh, missed the fuzzy matching. Levenstein similarity is what I want. Uh, we're going to compare d1 dot value, d2 dot value as res, and let's do. Oh, this might end up being a crazy query. That's ah, fine. Let's see what happens. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Turn d1.value, d2.value, and res order by res descending. Meditative wine, yes, yes. That, that would be, I'll have to have a look for meditative in the description, which we can do now because we've got indexes and we've got a description word, so we can do that. Right, I'm going to, th this is a crazy query, because you sort of think about it, there's going to be like thousands of words that are over the length of six. So what I'm going to do is let's be a bit, um, let's be a bit prescriptive with this. So I'm going to say, well, it's got to be um, 
eight characters long. Uh, it's greater than eight characters. And size d1 dot value is less than ten. Oh, let's, let's be a bit more generous. Oh my goodness, there, there will be there will definitely be a better way to write this, but greater than six even. And greater than six and size d2 dot value is less than ten. Okay, so let's really try and throttle this down a little bit. This is when we discover there's actually a lot of words that are that size. Actually, let, let's let's find out how many words are actually that size. Yeah, that's a crazy number to be comparing. So let's further refine this query to greater than. Actually, let's do a bit of research. What what's a sensible range? Oh my goodness, there's still quite a lot. Um, oh, this is just going to basically be. Eight and nine. It's not. This is just. That's just basically saying characters with nine. Uh, let's let's go with seven and. That's, that's fine. Let's go with seven. And, and oops. I'm gonna do a couple of looks at this, and I think we'll, we'll probably call it a day soon. I will go away, polish this up, and and write it up, and you'll have like the the, the beautiful abridged version on the repo later. So basically what's happening here, we're, com we're, we're comparing 9,700 9, words against each other. So, and then we're running like a uh, similarity against those. So it might take a little while, but that's okay. I mean, what we could have done is just, oh, you know what? I should have picked them that start with the same letter. Let let's do this. Let's further refine this and make this a bit more efficient. Let's say, and oh my goodness, this is this is messy. I think I can do this. I think I can do this. D one dot oh D two dot value. Basically, saying and this first character is the same as well. Uh, if we can't do this, um, we'll get an error message. There we go. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's do this and let's do uh, left d1 value 1 is equal to left d2 value 1. Okay, right. That should be even quicker because I can't imagine there's that many. If we go back to our counting query, and famous last words. Actually, no, let's leave it. Let's leave it like that. We'll give it a moment. If it doesn't run, that's fine. Um, the whole point of this was we just wanted to have a look at similar words that are, that are in here, and. I think, oh, is it finished? No, I think it's still going. I'm gonna try and rewrite this in a slightly more sensible way because I think this is crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to the start. I'm just going to 
I'm not going to order this. Let's limit it to the first 50. Because otherwise it'll be ages. But hey, you can't, you can't get, get oh, that's a nice thing what we wanted to do. So let's be a bit more generous. Let's say um, the first three characters are the same. Makes it a bit faster. Okay. Oh my goodness, it's matching the dates as well. That's so funny. All right, I'm feeling brave. Let's let's see what happens. Uh, hopefully, we've put enough criteria in here that it's not going to go crazy and compare the world. I mean, what we could? Oh, okay, that's not too bad. All right, it pro we're proving the point here. We've got, we've got here. We're proving the point. We, we've arrived. So you can see what's going on here. So what we're doing is we're doing the Levenstein similarity. We're comparing two words and oh questions just come in am i planning on using this as a back end for a graph command point oh why not i wasn't i i was literally just going down the the wine journey of working with this the things that i'm really really keen to do would be to end up with something where you can say let's say there's a wine that you liked and to be able to use the information such as what grapes were used what vineyard it came from what were the tasting notes and can you use the information to say recommend other wines or do some other interesting st statistics such as what are popular grape blends can you recommend or guess what would be a great blend that kind of thing uh, with the data but yeah why not we can have a look at how we could build something so that we can eventually query the data using graphql i love graphql i think it's so much fun and it, it's a really great way of being able to put views on things so yep yeah, why not let's do it stay tuned might be a few weeks before we get around to doing it but yeah why not okay right so we did our levenstein similarity on our uh, wines and we had to do a lot of things and to be honest with you because we're dealing with such you know we've got such a large number of things that we're going to be cross comparing with it it makes sense maybe put a range around the, the the size of the word because there's no way that a word that's got three characters is should be matched to a word that's got 15 characters that's crazy so you know the things that the restrictions we've put in place make sense and it's going to help speed things up as well and you can see what we've got here so we were saying like match to make sure that the words the first three letters are the same in both words which is not a bad way to deal with plurals and that's exactly what's going on here so you can see here how we're dealing with the plurals tasmania tasmania tasmanian tasmania that's dealing with a possessive sulfites so you can see this is not a bad bad approach and you can see straight away here are a bunch of words we can go away and deal with them so like rosemary I assume that's the spelling state going here, namesake. So you can see straight away, this is a nice way of being able to deal with these. And in fact, you can look at the, the sort of similarities come back as, you know, 0.89. So I right, look at these, all the, the spelling mistakes. So just out of interest, if we, and you can see here, there's probably like a hyphen or something that's happened here. So just just if we have a look at how many of these. So how many of these come back with a um, result? So let's first off, let's let's see how many of these. How, how many do we actually have that have a similarity value of higher than 0.88? Uh, res is greater than 0.88 and let's just do a let's we'll count how many of these d1 wow so we've got like a thousand with just that's such a high threshold there we've got over a thousand coming back yeah with that with that um that similarity score of 0.88 so that's lots of straight away that's like loads of duplicates we can get rid of and like we had about what 36,000 so that's that's getting rid of 1,000 so I want to have a quick look at what comes back so if we say uh, where res is greater than 0.8 and res is less than 0.88 let's do that let's see what comes back so let's redo return 
d1.value, d2.value. And res, why not? Let's just see some of the stuff that comes back. Oh, look at that. So we've got loads of years as well that we need to get rid of. So that's fine. We can we can get rid of those quite quickly. And yeah, all of those years we're gonna want. We, we're just gonna get rid of all of that. And then even with like the lower one, you can see skipping and skimping. Okay, uh, probably not the same. Those two are probably not the same. Okay, so. I think we're starting to get an idea. So this is this is the the, the, the thing that's appearing that you get with um, when you're using the sort of like the fuzzy text text matching is that you've got like one letter difference. And it's like well, that's not that big difference, but actually it's a completely different word. So what we might have a play with this is using the um, you got the uh, the phonics that like the the sound matching. Uh, functions and procedures in APOC so we can have a look at those and see if we you know if that can help give us sound because overlook and overtook should give us different sounds so that be, might be another thing we use to compare so we've got a little bit of work to figure out what is the the good way of doing this and maybe what we might do is we just want to look at the, the last few characters that might be another way we try to tackle how we try to tackle the um, the plurals. So there's a few tricks that we can never play with, but we've got a lot of these years that's probably worth trying to get rid of those. So let's have a think about how we're going to tackle those next, but we've got a lot of years, so we want to filter all of those out because those are not useful to us. But yeah, cool, okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to do a bit of uh, research in the background. So I'm going to try and fix the fix the connecting the wine to the description and that will be updated in the in the repo. I will also have a look at uh, getting rid of the dates. So we're probably going to use APOC, one of the APOC text functions to help find those and then we're just going to delete those. Actually, we, actually, we can probably do that quite quickly. So let's have a quick look. Let's let's see the size of the problem. How many of these numbers do we have? So actually, let me have a look at cipher as well. Can we do can we do a regex? Because what we want to do is we want to do like a you know where the word matches and it's just numeric. So let's have a quick look at go into the site documentation have a quick look uh, yeah so let's see if we can do that or have an idea about how we'd approach it and then we will call it a day so string functions let's have a quick peek can we do um, we do here I guess what we could do is we don't want to replace what we want it to do we want it to just come back and just say whether or not it met a condition Um, hmm. um, I guess what we could do is if we said something like so did 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 normal replace support regex or is it just apoc replace I think it might just be apoc replace
Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, so what I, I reckon we might be able to do. So let's just do a quick test run. I think if we do a pop text replace, so we take a text, we're going to do our pattern for whatever, and our replacement's going to be nothing. So I think, let's do a test run. If we do and we do um, turn size equals zero so that should basically say true or false it's gonna be test our regex is going to be naught to nine so just digits and our replacement's going to be nothing oops oh okay right so that's how we can do it so let's do it the size of the problem so let's see how how big this problem is so obviously we don't need to not, we're not doing comparative match, we're just going to do this. So let's do, um, um, where, oh, can we do this? Oh, this is going to be messy. That's fine. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying this out. So let's do where size, apoc text, place, uh, d1 dot value. Not to nine. In fact, what we probably want to do is, uh, so we're just doing this now for where we've just got numbers, but we probably want to get rid of stuff that's got any numbers in it. So we can just do something where the size changes. So the, the size of the word gets smaller when we replace the numerical values with, with nothing. And that not, might be another filter that we can use to get rid of stuff. But let's just have a look at how many just like numbers only. And then we can change it slightly for numbers with so let's let's have a look what happens so i'm going to replace this with nothing uh is equal to zero and i do return size oh turn count d1 so this is just descriptive words of numbers let's see what comes back okay not a huge number it's still a thousand so let's do this where we can say where size of that is is that the right way around? Is less than size of d1 dot value. Okay, so how many of these have we got? All right, maybe I've got the thing the wrong way around. It's all good. Wow. Okay, so that's so we're looking at around what two thousand, just over two thousand. So we can get rid of those pretty quickly. So let's let's just get rid of those. Ah, uh, no, I made a fallacy. So that that is also going to include the 956. So in total, it's like 1300. So what we can do is we can get rid of those straight away. Because we're not interested in those. Detach, delete, D1, and we can just get rid of those completely. 